Okay, so um, this is similar to the last problem we did, but I, I think it will be um, good for us to be able to compare this one and this one. Compare this to like CH4 or CCL4, and this to like the last one we did, C or SCL2. Okay? So let's try these. Okay, and CL3. So you know that N has the five valence electrons like that. Cl needs just one valence electron. So what you'll find is that you'll make a bond like this. Okay? And in fact, you'll make Cl bonds there. And there as well. Okay? So you got to know that you've got one, two, three, four electron groups around that nitrogen. Okay? One of them being a lone pair. So this bond angle here is going to be 107.3. So this is a um, trigonal pyramidal structure. So now what we want to do is figure out the electronegativity difference between N and CL. Um, unfortunately, there is no electronegativity difference. So N is 3.0 and CL is 3.0. So none of these bonds are polar. Okay. So this inherently is a nonpolar molecule. PBR3, notice P is in the same family as N is. BR is in the same family as CL is. So they're going to look exactly the same. These structures are going to look exactly the same. Trigonal pyramidal. Okay. So we're going to have P with its electrons, PR, like that. So E, its electronegativity is 2.1. BR's electronegativity is 2.8. So the difference in the electronegativity of this bond is 0 0.7 to okay. BR is greater electronegativity, so the dipole arrow will look like that. That's just for the bond. So imagine the dipole arrow for this one would look the same. And this one would look the same like that. So they're all going down. Okay. So we have a partially positive center up here. And down here, all around the bottom here, is partially negative. Okay. So the polarity of this molecule, the overall polarity, will look like that. So negative down here, positive up here. So this is a polar molecule. CF4. It's good to compare this even to these, okay? Because CF4 as well has four electron groups around it. So, but since it's got four things bonded to it, like carbon always does, it has to be tetrahedral in nature. Okay. So in this molecule, we've got C, which is 2.5 divided and F, which is 4.0. So every one of these bonds 
is 1.5 divides. Okay? So when we look at this, we know, well, we've got the exact same dipole arrow for every one of these bonds going out from the carbon to the fluorine. And they're all going to be going out at an um, uh, electronegativity difference of 1.5. Okay? But since they're all going from the central atom out, they're canceling each other out. Okay? So all of these are antagonists to each other. So all of them are canceling each other out. And overall, the molecule is going to be nonpolar. Okay? It really helps if you have a little model to see um, the tetrahedral nature. Now look, let's look at water. Water is another good one to compare to CF4 and to PVR3. Because all three of these molecules have four electron groups, okay? But they differ in the amount of bonds that they have and the amount of uh, lone pair electrons, okay? Since we've got two non-bonding pairs of electrons and two bonding pairs of electrons, what we find is these squish down more than the ideal 109 and a half degrees to make this bond angle 104.5 degrees. When we take the difference in electronegativity, we find that oxygen is 3.5, hydrogen is 2.1, so, the overall difference in electronegativity is going to be 1.4 divides. In this case, the positive charge is going to be located on the hydrogen. So, we're going to have two dipole arrows, so two bonds that are equal in magnitude of difference of electronegativity. So, the combined of those two is going to create a positive region down here. So, delta positive. And a negative region here, making the overall dipole arrow look like that. 